This video is about Silent Q in Rekordbox. I don't see a whole lot of videos explaining it clearly online, and it can be a pretty handy feature in some cases, so I'm going to talk about it now. So basically what happens is when you press this Silent Q button, it mutes the track that is currently playing and it shows that it is muted in Rekordbox DJ, and that track is going to stay muted until you press a cue point. I have cue points one through four mapped on the XP1 here. So as soon as I press cue point four, it jumps to cue point four and unmutes itself. Why is this handy? I'll explain. If you're an open format DJ or someone who plays multiple tempos in a single set, coming up with creative ways to transition between BPMs can sometimes be uh, frustrating to say the least especially if you're trying to do it in a way that isn't just simply playing a pre-made edit. And Silent Cue actually helps with that. So in this crude example, I'm going to quickly jump from 125 beats per minute down to about 108 beats per minute. And uh, it's really simple mix using the Silent Cue feature and uh, the Pad Effects feature in Rekordbox DJ. So I'm going to be uh, using two James Brown tracks and they're both going to be pitched up by two semitones purposely to try to avoid the uh, copyright flag. So you see we're jamming at 125. I'm going to echo it out. I'm going to punch in. See how this is running, but it's muted. We're going to punch it in. You see now it's full on. So there you have it. That is the basic functionality of the silent cue. You press the silent cue, it shows that it's muted, and even if you turn the volume up, it's not going to play anything until you press that cue button. And then it comes on full speed and full blast. So I'm sure a few of you by now are saying, Hey Billy, why the hell would I ever use Silent Cue? When is that ever handy with me during my sets? I mean, couldn't I just press the cue button and cue it to where it needs to be? And then I can leave it up and press play. And it essentially does the same thing. Why do I even need Silent Cue if I have controllers or a CDJ? Well, my answer to that is you're absolutely right. You don't need Silent Q for that situation. But uh, I have noticed that it does come in handy with gigs where I'm using turntables, like a Motown on Mondays. When you press start on a turntable, you can hear the motor spinning up a little bit and it doesn't come in on time. And uh, the Silent Q is definitely a lot more handy in that situation. Also, you'll see in this example, I'm using a controller with an XP1 and like I said in previous videos that's a really redundant thing to do and I rarely actually bring uh, the XP1 to a gig where I'm also bringing a controller. Uh, the XP1 shows up at gigs where I have a Nexus rig uh, that's going to be there or if I have uh, turntables. So this is my obligatory end of video speech. Do you think you'll use Silent Cue? Leave a comment below and let us know whether or not you think Silent Q is handy for your workflow. And of course, like, subscribe, etc., etc., or don't. Bye bye.